We want to look at revising now, uh, solving equations. Now, as we said before with our notes, and, and looking at the question, and looking at the language of questions, it really matters uh, in this one that we want to actually find values of x. So we want to solve an equation. We don't want to simplify it. We, well, we're going to need to simplify certain things, but it's all about finding a value for x. In and this is the difference between an equation and an expression. Expressions x can be any value but equations in equations x will be particular values so it might be one value might be two might be three depending on the, the question depending on what we've been given x could have a number of, of values but the ones we want to do to start off with only has one each, each equation only has one value for x so what we want to do is uh look at having equations and solving them but what we want to do is we, we've got to keep in mind that we, we've got to have a balance of our equation we've told the two things are equal to start off with and we've got to keep those things in balance so if you can imagine a scale you can't just take things off and throw them away without doing things to both sides so the idea is that we're looking at a number of 9x minus 7 equals 4x plus 28 so we're looking for a value of x that will make this true so what we've got to do is start collecting terms together so we we'd subtract 4x off both sides now notice what I'm doing to one side I'm doing to the other so the 4x will, will go from that side but the 9x minus 4x gives me 35 uh, it gives me 5 and then to keep it balanced I have to add the 7 and that gives me 35 now I'm looking at going well 5 times what number gives me 35 and that will give me 7 and you can check that you're right. That's the nice thing about equations. You can check that you are correct because you can put 7 in and go 9 7s are 63 minus 7. That's 56. 4 7s are 28 plus 28. That gives me 56. That works. It satisfies the equation. So it, it, may, it, it is giving us, and we've found the value that makes the equation true. So that's what we've got to do. We've got to look at keeping an idea of a balanced uh, situation because they're going to they've got to be equal so we can't just do things without doing it to both sides so it's so this is something you've done in the junior school you've solved equations like this so there shouldn't be too much of a hassle to solve these ones they will throw some more complicated ones we're not going to throw simple ones at you like 5x equals 35 and so that that's that's just going to waste your time but you want we want to solve ones that are a bit more complex and we can break it down to get those easier ones so looking at the next one 4x plus 4 lots of x plus 1 equals 2 lots of x plus 3 plus 8 so really there's nothing to we if we could factorize we, we go and try and factorize and make life easier but that's, there's nothing to do there so we have to expand because we have to collect our terms so expand our brackets out taking care that we get the right numbers and we don't make errors there and then start to collect our terms so we, we we add the 6 and the 8, so they come together to give us 14. And then I'm starting to collect the x's on one side and the numbers on one side and the other side, because that's what we end, want to end up. We want to end up with 1x. So that's got to be our aim. What's the value of x? What's 1, one lot of x equal to? So we subtract 2x at this point off both sides. So that's where we get the 2x from there, because the 2x minus 2x cancelled. We subtract 4. So we just get pronumerals on our left-hand side. So that cancels there. So we have to subtract 4 there as well. So what we do to one side, we do the other. And that gives us 10. And then 2 fives are 10. We can do, like, we divide that by 2. and divide, But really, you can see that 2 fives would be 10. So it's not that big a deal. So have a look and you can get some more examples there. So again, we, we can look at our brackets there and expand them out as we've done. And then collect our terms. So... We, the 2x cancels off this side. We subtract the 2x there after subtracting both of them. And then adding 20 on this side and adding 20 there. Notice I'm doing the opposite operation because minus 20 plus 20 would be 0. And as I don't want any constants on the left-hand side. And two, uh, 2 lots of x is equal to 28, so x would be 14. So again, we're expanding these out. So all the skills we've been doing in the last few weeks are coming into play. So expanding our brackets, making sure we get the correct sign. So be careful, five, minus 5 times minus 2 plus 10. Collecting the terms. And then we've obviously 
collected 3x, 16x, minus 5x gives us 14x. We get a 10 plus a 24. When we subtract on both sides, we get on the other side, it's minus 34. So and then dividing by 14 on both sides gives us 34 on, on 14 or 17 on 7. The t question 5 here, we've got 10 outside of the bracket there, minus 3. So we expand our brackets out. We collect our terms. So 20x minus 9x gives us 11x. Subtract 30, subtract 6 from both sides. And then how it gets subtracted from the 58 leaves us 22. And x would be 2. And 5 multiplied by the bracket and that bracket and 2 multiplied by that bracket. Expand it out. Collect our terms. 10x, 2x gives us 8x. And we've got 5 minus 8 gives us minus 3. But then add that to both sides. So you're adding 8. Subtracting 5 off both sides gives you 10, so x would be 5 on 4. So that's just simplifying it there. Um, when we got examples involving fractions, so none of the other ones had fractions, the fractions just add a little bit more complication to everything. But what we try and do is we try and remove the fraction straight away. So I've got all of 2x minus 1 divided by 5 is equal to 3. And you've got to start thinking to yourself, well, how am I, how, what happens to x to start off with? We take x, we multiply it by 2, we divide by 1, subtract 1, then we divide everything by 5 equals 3. So to work it in reverse, I'd get rid of the 5 first. So multiply by 5 on both sides. So the 5 multiplies here because it's the 5 divided by 5. They end up cancelling gives us the 15 there. And then it's down to an equation that's pretty simple. The 2x minus 1, so we add 1 on both sides and then divide by eight, 2 on both sides to give us 8. Again, check if you're right by putting 8 back into the equation. It's a nice thing about doing these ones in exams. You know if you're right straight away because you can do the substitution and see if it works. So that makes life a lot, lot easier in an exam. Gets you a bit more confident too. With this one, what I'd try and do is just multiply every term by 3. Because we've got three separate terms, and we've got one that's a fraction, if I multiply x by 3, I get 3x. One third of x, which is what that is, multiplied by 3, well, this 3 would cancel with the one third and give us just x. 3 lots of 27 gives us 21. And then I collect my terms. 4x equals 21, so x is 21 on 4. So I'm just multiplying through to get rid of the fractions. Same thing here. If I want to get rid of the 3 there, I'd multiply every term by 3. So I multiply, and you can see that's what happens there. You get a 3x up there, 5 becomes 15. And then, for, I've got the 4 there. I can multiply by 4, by multiply every term by 4. So the 15 minus 4 is 60. Well, 3x will be by itself, because the 4 is cancelled now. 4x plus 16. So I'd... Add 3x on both this side, subtract 16 on this side. And I get 7x is equal to 44. And then do the division, so 44 on 7. I've left it as an improper fraction a lot of these times. You can write it in whatever form you like. And whether you write it as x is equal to 44 on 7 or 7 on 44 on 7 is equal to x, again, doesn't matter whether your x is on the left-hand side or your right-hand side of your equation. This one we've multiplied all the way through by 4. So that's where the 4x plus 2, 4, x plus 2 becomes 4x plus 8. And the 4 cancels on this side. Collect our terms. So subtract x, subtract 8, and we get 4 on 3. So that's where we're doing these ones. We get a little bit more complicated. But again, we're multiplying every term by 4. So the 4 multiplies by the x minus 6. The 3x on 4 cancels, so we get just 3x. And 4 multiplies by the x minus 1. So that's where we get the 4x minus 4. And then start to collect your terms. The 4x's, well, we subtract 4x on both sides. That would leave us just 3x. And we'd add 20 on both sides. So 24 on both sides. So the plus 24 would cancel there. Minus 4 plus 24 would give us positive 20. And then divide by 3 to give us 20 on 3. This time... I'm multiplying by 6. Now, why 6? Well, if I look at the lowest common multiple of this one, is 2 times 3 is 6. So if I multiply through by 6, this, fra this fraction gets multiplied by 6, which gives us 3. The 6 and the 2 cancels to give us 3. Lots of the y minus 1. And the 3 would cancel on the 6 to give us 2. Lots of y minus 2. And then we multiply the other side by 6 as well. Every Both sides are being multiplied by 6. 
and in turn each of these terms is multiplied but notice that it gets rid of our fractions for us and we're just down the ones we were doing before where we can expand our brackets collect our terms and then simplify to get our, our pollen our, our unknown that we wanted so again here the lowest common multiple four and eight is is eight so we multiply through by eight gives us the two multiply through here by eight so the eight lots of one will give us eight and the eight times eight minus x minus eight over eight well the eight would cancel with that one when we expand it out and then expand our brackets out collect our terms and find x by itself the same thing here three fours are twelve that's the lowest common multiple of all both of those so we multiply both sides by 12 so our terms start to cancel here we get a 4 out the front of this bracket because 12 divides 3 divides in the 12 4 times 4 divides in the 12 3 times outside that bracket we expand our brackets collect our terms and we've got our we've got our answer that we need so that's what we do with linear equations um the ones here are starting to get reasonably difficult but it's still doable once we get once we make sure we just multiply through by our lowest common multiple it gets rid of our fractions that's the first thing you want to do is get rid of a fraction so but so look for that lowest common multiple to multiply right through and then you can start to solve it like we've done like you've done in the junior school so if you're faced with harder ones like that that's what we need to do